Welcome to this segment on practical considerations in implementing switching power poles. So we'll look at uh, use of uh, ICs, for example, in the gate drive circuitry, and we'll look at various uh, design considerations in terms of thermal considerations, magnetic components, capacitors, and selection of switching frequency. And we will also look at uh, the effect of diode reverse recovery current on the switching, uh, switching characteristics in uh, switching power poles. So there is uh, increasing use of integrated circuits. Uh, uh, for example, this uh, slide is showing that if you have this input uh, voltage here and ground over here, then this uh, source here could be jumping up and down depending upon uh, whether the transistor is on or off. And here's the control signal that is coming with respect to this ground. And uh, so there is an isolation, electrical isolation here. And, uh, uh, you know, this driver IC can then be used uh, connected with respect to source uh, to uh, supply the gate of this uh, MOSFET here. So this makes uh, the implementation of these switches uh, much simpler. Uh, when it comes to design considerations, we will look at the effect of switching frequency. Uh, and also, we already talked about selection of transistors and diodes in, a, in another module. But uh, when it comes to magnetic components, uh, the, the, the area product here, it depends upon the inductance L and the peak uh, current that uh, this inductor has to carry and the RMS current. And uh, it also depends upon the maximum current density and the maximum flux density that we can have, inversely proportional to J max and B max. Similarly, when it comes to a transformer, the area product here depends uh, inversely upon the switching frequency. So higher the switching frequency, smaller would be this area product. Uh, and that, in turn, uh, determines the size of uh, you know, these uh, magnetic components. And also when it comes to capacitor selection, uh, when we talk about a capacitor, it has some equivalent uh, series inductance uh, and also equivalent series resistance, and we should be aware of that. So here is a P-SPICE model. For example, here a, an, an electrolytic capacitor is connected uh, in parallel with some another type of capacitor, for example, a metal film capacitor, and uh, the admittance here is plotted as a function of frequency. Uh, and uh, we see that uh, the electrolytic capacitor has this uh, characteristic in red. So beyond its resonant frequency, this capacitor begins to look like an inductor. Similarly, the, the, the other, um, perhaps a metal film capacitor, has uh, this characteristic shown in uh, uh, blue, and it shows that uh, beyond a certain frequency here, uh, this capacitor begins to look like uh, an inductor. So if you connect these two in parallel, the, the combined admittance is shown in green, and it shows that uh, uh, you know, it has a pretty small, uh, uh, its resonant frequency here is shown here, uh, so we can uh, make use of uh, the characteristics of both the electrolytic capacitor as well as the uh, metal film capacitor here. Uh, when it comes to thermal design, uh, uh, here's the ch uh, chip which is in some kind of a case, and this case uh, is isolated from the heat sink, uh, from the isolation pad, because the case may be jumping up and down in uh, its potential, but perhaps we want to keep the heat sink at ground level, so we need uh, an isolation pad. So various temperatures are shown here. This is the ambient temperature, this is the heat sink temperature, this is the case temperature, and this is the junction temperature over here. And uh, <clears throat> so between the, uh, the, the junction and the case, uh, the the heat is transferred mainly through conduction, and the resistance is shown here. Uh, similarly, between uh, case and heat sink, it's through, uh, uh, through the isolation pad. Uh, 
it's through conduction and the resistance is shown here. And from heat sinks to ambient, this may be convection and radiation. And uh, this uh, thermal resistance is shown by this symbol over here. So as far as the electrical analog is concerned, uh, dissipated heat can be modeled as uh, a current source, power dissipation. Uh, and uh, here's the uh, ambient temperature represented by a current source and uh, based on the various resistances and its combination, then uh, we get the junction temperature which should be below a certain level for this device to operate appropriately. So here is a uh, design trade-off. Uh, as we increase the switching frequency, we can appreciate that uh, the heat dissipation as discussed uh, uh, earlier uh, would rise and therefore we will need a bigger heat sink in size whereas the size of magnetic components uh, and the capacitor perhaps uh, the combined uh, it, they go down. So there is some somewhere here there is a uh, you know uh, optimum operating range there is not one single switching frequency but a certain range within which uh, it will be optimum to operate this converter uh, based on the, uh, the type of devices we have available. So now let's look at uh, the effect of uh, diode reverse recovery and uh, its effect on power losses. So first thing we recognize that uh, when the di diode is uh, conducting, there's a finite voltage drop across it, uh, VFM, with this polarity over here, and therefore the diode forward loss is equal to this uh, voltage drop across the diode times this uh, current. And uh, if uh, D is the, the duty ratio of this uh, transistor, then the diode is conducting for 1 minus D uh, portion of every switching time period. So that gives us the, the, the forward conduction loss in the diode. Now let's look at the, the reverse recovery characteristic of this uh, diode. If this diode was ideal, then if you were to plot this uh, diode current over here, which is in this direction, in this circuit, uh, this diode current is as a function of time coming down, and if this diode was ideal, it will come to zero and become zero. But that's not what happens in uh, most diodes. Uh, this uh, current actually uh, through the diode goes negative, and then uh, this uh, diode recovers and it, uh, this, neg uh, this current goes to zero. And then after that, it stays zero over here. So the, the reverse recovery characteristic is shown here uh, in terms of this time T sub A, where the current is still going more and more negative. And uh, there's a uh, essentially very small uh, voltage across this diode. But uh, once it reaches this value, uh, the peak reverse recovery current, then this uh, diode is able to withstand uh, this uh, reverse blocking voltage. And this would be the same as this input voltage uh, in the circuit here. And uh, at that point, uh, uh, the current through the reverse current through the diode is becoming smaller and smaller. But uh, Nevertheless, uh, there is uh, this uh, area here, which we label as Q sub RR. But as far as the power loss, switching power loss in this diode is concerned, uh, it's really occurring during this uh, time T sub B, where there is voltage across this diode. Otherwise, it's uh, during this time T A, it's uh, fairly small. So what is this uh, uh, switching power loss? That is given by this expression here, which includes this voltage here times uh, uh, this uh, reverse recovery current. And so it's really the, uh, is equal to this area and uh, taken its average. And it also, of course, depends upon the switching frequency. So uh, not only we have uh, uh, some. Uh, switching power loss in the diode, but it also leads to higher switching loss, power loss in the transistor. So that is shown here. So here it's assumed that uh, this diode uh, is not ideal, uh, 
So the current through it uh, becomes negative. Therefore, the, uh, the current that is flowing through the drain of this transistor, uh, instead of stopping here and becoming flat uh, at I0, it keeps rising uh, beyond this I0 by this peak reverse recovery current. And uh, while this, uh, uh, and it's assumed that at this point that the diode certainly is able to block in reverse voltage, but uh, during this interval, uh, since the voltage across the diode is essentially zero, uh, the voltage across the FET, or the transistor, is uh, equal to Vn here. So as you can see, the switching power loss that we have in this transistor, which would have been like this, it's shown by a bigger area. So it leads to higher uh, switching uh, power loss in the transistor as well. So uh, it uh, brings us to the end of this uh, segment where we have looked at certain practical considerations in terms of using a gate uh, driver IC and some design considerations. And also we have looked at the diode reverse recovery characteristic and its effect on uh, switching losses and uh, also conduction losses. So thank you very much.